What's up my lovely love bug goodies? Welcome back to your girl channel and to my kitchen how to cook and I'm here in the kitchen about to turn it up Showing you how to cook for an event and all these things Now if you're here watching me cooking for your very first time and you have not subscribed We are wait upon go ahead and do so and then after you do that you turn on your post notification settings To always be reminded whenever your girl upload what a brand new video. Let's jump right into it okay good let's jump straight into the recipe now the chicken is already washed nice and clean with salt lemon juice and vinegar now to get started I'm going to add some salt to it and then I'm going to add some black pepper Now to the black pepper, I did go in and add some garlic powder to it. And with the combination of the garlic powder, I did go in and I added the onion powder as well. Now after I added the onion powder, I did use the Grace All Purpose Seasoning. And you could substitute that out for whatever kind of all-purpose seasoning that you like but that is the only all-purpose seasoning that I like now I did use my Ocherios chicken seasoning to my poultry like so and then to the chicken season of course your girl I forget our combo seasoning now a lot of people have been asking me about the combo season if it's, it's not available in your supermarket just go on Amazon it's there now I did go in with some ground ginger now if you don't have that just use fresh ginger to go work just as well now this is my allspice and the only one that I really love to use is the Ocherios but you could use whatever you like and I added about 12 seeds of that and I added also about 3 tablespoons of minced garlic to the mix as well. Now after I did all of this and all of that, of course the girl I've used our Ocherios mild jerk curry powder. I added some to it, maybe about two tablespoons of that curry powder now i'm making about uh five pounds of chicken right here because i'm cooking for 10 people this event is for 10 plates okay so yeah but i will list as much as we can list down below i didn't measure anything here that's how i cook when i'm cooking in my kitchen i do not measure but i do give measurements for you guys so i'm going to go ahead and do the best that i can but i didn't measure nothing right here so and again i'm cooking for a 10 plate event now you want to go ahead and give it a good mix right here just to get everything combined but i did go in and add some green seasoning to it as well and then i combine all that and the chicken i did allow it to sit and marinate for an hour that's all i needed here since i'm cooking a lot when i'm cooking just a me and my family and so i'm able to get the 30 minutes but i did give it an hour here all right so i covered it up and let it sit and chill for one hour only like so all seasoned really good now one hour later the chicken was ready to go on stove top now to get it started on stove top i did go in and add some oil to that pot any kind of oil of your choice is fine you know the sizzle and is lit then i went in again with some fresh garlic right here about three teaspoons of that garlic okay like boom and then I would also went back in with some of that curry powder and I am using the Ocherius brand but you could use any kind of a curry powder that you like I'm just obsessed with Ocherius products okay you don't have to use that use whatever you like now toast that up as a combination for about 30 seconds do not burn the 
garlic at all and you definitely don't want to burn that curry because you will have bitter curry in your kitchen bitter curry chicken and the body don't want to eat that at the event right so go ahead and just toast it up for not more than 30 seconds now after 30 seconds you want to go in and add the chicken to the mix just like that and my fire here is on medium heat do not put it on high heat because you don't want to cook it too fast you want it to take time and soak through the meat now if you're still here watching me cooking if you're here actually watching me cooking for your first time hey what's up this is your girl aka how to cook aka juliana please be sure to subscribe to the channel and turn on those post notifications and if you are one of my old time goodie big up yourself straight maximum amount of love right your girl is always here to deliver and if you don't see anything that you want just ask me because it's gonna come it might not come immediately but it's coming coming to forget nothing right okay so now that I had it all the chicken to it with that marinade that I have in the pot I'm not letting it go to waste I added about a cup of water to it and then throw it onto the top of the chicken just like I'm doing here like so Mm -hmm. and then just give it a little breathing room don't stir it up and all that stuff you want to leave it unbuttered but just give it some breathing room like so and then all you have to do is just cover it up and just let it cook for about 15 minutes that's it 15 minutes now while it's going for that 15 minutes I'm going to show you what I'm going to add to this particular one because this is what she requested she wanted additionally on the chicken she wanted some corns and potatoes originally I always put um, potatoes of course uh, bell peppers onions cannon and thyme and all that stuff coconut milk and things but she wanted the corn to it so I went ahead and put that all in now that couple of minutes later that is what it looks like it's going to produce extra added uh, liquids to the chicken that's fine that's all you want you don't want to put any more liquids on it if you have the fire on medium eat it is going to produce a lot of natural juices from the chicken all right now if you're still here watching me cooking and you have not subscribed to my second channel life is julia go ahead and subscribe to that channel the link for that channel will be listed down below okay good day now I did go in now at the scallion cup gonna season up this bad boy had some time to it had the bell peppers in and I use green and red but you could change it up if you like of course I went in with some fresh onions to it and tomatoes a lot of people don't use tomato in them curry but I love tomato then I went in with the potatoes and the corn that she requested okay so corn she wanted and corn it was just a few she didn't want too much just a few and the outskirts wanted pepper of course now I also added about two tablespoons of unsalted butter about a teaspoon of apple cider vinegar because I never 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 cook without that and a half of lemon and then I just squeeze it all over the chicken just like so okay if you're using fresh lemon like the bottled one just go ahead and put like a, a tablespoon to it now I also added one cup of coconut cream to the mix like so and on top of the veggies I added some black pepper now if you want to add salt you could go ahead and add salt you want to add anything else go ahead and add it but I was good to go all I needed was a little bit of black pepper on top of those veggies cover it up nice and tight and let it sizzle my nizzle for I would say a good 30 minutes covered nice and tight on medium heat only after that 30 or so minutes and it simmered my nizzle really really good and everywhere smell ton up loud that is what home girl chicken looks like curry chicken is all done simmered nice and slow on low to medium heat for 30 minutes and it was all done oh so good oh so good cooked to perfection honey cooked to perfection and this serving right here again is for a 10 plate settings
And again, goodie, everything that I'm using here for this curry chicken recipe will be listed down below. All right, make a move on because she also wanted gunga rice and peas. And I do have a couple of recipes up already showing you this method. But all I did was cook the gungo with um, garlic and pimento seeds. After the gungo was cooked, added the coconut milk, the coconut cream rather to it, right? And then I went in and added the scallion and the fresh thyme and if you don't have fresh thyme use um dry thyme powdered thyme you know what i'm saying just go ahead and use whatever you have and the scotch bonnet pepper and i'm going to allow that to cook for about 30 minutes so that the seasoning could do its magic alongside that coconut now after that 30 minutes go by everything has come together it's time to add the rice to it but be sure though to give it a little taste test just to make sure that that liquid is how you like it. You could add black pepper to it. You could add seasonings if you want to add it to it. You could make it stay authentic, but just make it your own, how it suits you. Then I went in and added the rice into the mix. Turn my fire down below, um, low to meat, low to medium eat right here because I do not want to cook this rice and peas. I never cook my rice and peas fast. I always allow it to steam only. Instead of cooking, it's steaming on the lowest heat possible. And I always like to add a little bit of butter to my rice and peas, especially when I'm making gungo rice and peas like this. I always had a little bit of butter to it. But just you want to cover it up nice and tight with the foil paper and just allow it to steam on low to medium heat only. It does take a total of nothing under 30 minutes because you want to make sure that rice, every single rice grain is steamed to perfection. After it's done in about 30 or so minutes, that is what you're going to have right here. You're going to have perfect gunga rice and peas and you can substitute out the rice of course for whatever you like i did use the parboiled rice that is the rice that i like and that is the rice that she wanted for her event perfect perfect now goody make sure that those notifications are on so that way you will be notified every time your girl upload a brand new video. You don't want to miss them because I'm always fast, easy, and simple to follow. Now I'm going to be sure to test that rice to make sure that it is in fact cooked. Every grain of rice is cooked nice and tender. If it still feel a little dry to the touch, just add a little bit more water right in the middle. Cover it up back nice and tight for about 10 minutes. Same thing on low heat and you're good to go. It should be perfect, but if you follow my steps, just like I showed you step by step, you get it right the first time. Now, we're going to move on and make this um, corn pie. Fast, easy, and simple, and tasteful. So all I'm doing here is getting um, two packs of these corn muffin mix, some sharp cheddar cheese. You could use substitute that for whatever you like. Some sugar to give it flavor, some cut um red bell pepper two eggs and some cooking oil also you want to add the, the make sure that you add white sugar only and i use brown sugar and then i'm going to use one can of sweet corn and one can of kernel sweet corn right so when i cream style i want a whole corn don't use the same thing. Do the print cans of corn. All right, let's go. Now, what we're going to do here is go ahead and add those two packs of corn mix into a container. And you want to make sure that your oven is already on because you have to put this in a um, very hot oven. And the oven should be on 400 degrees. Now you're going to go in and add the whole corn to it. And then you had the cream style corn to it. And you're going to add the entire two cans to the mix. Now you want to add the white sugar only. Do not use brown sugar. And then you add the cooking oil. 
Then you're, I'm going to add two large eggs to it as well. And then you'll add some of the red bell pepper. I'm leaving some to top it off when I'm ready to put it in the oven. I did go in and put a little bit of the sharp cheddar cheese to it. About two handful of that cheese there. And then combine everything together. That's how fast, easy, and simple it is to make. Just go through everything in the container. Mix it all in. And you're going to have the most perfect, perfect, fast, quick, and easy corn pie in your kitchen every time for any event any event okay just be sure to give it a really really good mix so that way all the cornmeal is dissolved in the mixture and you're good to go Okay, after you've done all the mixing, we're going to get a container that you're going to use to bake setup. So what I did was use my butter flavor cooking spray and sprayed it generously into the container because I do not want it to stick. That looks pretty good. The more butter, the better, right? Then I went in and poured in that good mixture all up in the baking container, like so. This is such an easy way, like when you're doing events and stuff, this is one of the most easiest, fast recipe that you could ever make to feed a whole lot of people, right? Alright, so after I'm going to do that now, you want to make sure that you give it a nice little tap just to make it sure everything is nice and smooth and everything is all leveled out. Leveled out. Level up. Level up, right? Just like so. Now, all I'm going to do here next is go ahead and sprinkle some more of the sharp cheddar cheese on top of the corn. Mix like so. Just, just sprinkle it all up in there as much as you like. Then make it pretty with some of that red bell pepper and you could use green, yellow, orange, pink, purple, whatever you want to use. Go ahead and use it up in there. That's what it looks like. We're going to pop that bad boy in the oven at 400 degrees. It is done right there. Look at that in the oven. Nice and beautiful golden brown. The cheese is melted the way I like it. When I was done, I was ready to let it get nice and juicy on top so all I did was get a little, little bit of melted butter and just laid it on top of the cornbread like so just lay it on up on there when it is hot do not put it on there when it's cold just do it when it's hot it's going to melt right into all the cracks of that thing and set it aside now we're going to do some steam vegetables she did not want the regular cabbage she wanted the Chinese kind of cabbage this is one I bought in the farmers market this is the one that she requested she wanted so the girl is always here to deliver so not to prepare it all I did was take the leaves of the separate the leaves like I'm doing here. This is how I prepared the cabbage. This kind of a cabbage, right? Okay, so what I'm about to do here is give it a nice little rinse. After I give it a nice little rinse, because you want to make sure there's no dirt hiding anywhere on the leaves. I went ahead and cut the bottom portion off because that part is a little on the harder side. Then I cut it into my desired pieces and you could cut it smaller than I'm doing here. You could cut it bigger because this particular cabbage, it shrinks much faster than the regular cabbage that we use in our kitchen do. It's more, it's more tender and this is why she chose this kind of a cabbage. Okay. So I just went ahead and just cut it into my desired pieces for sure. And you don't want to cook this too long either because it does cook very fast. Now, what I did was go ahead and put it into the pot. Went ahead and poured some mixed veggies on there. Very simple. Put some red bell peppers on there for color and flavor as well. Then added a little bit of thyme to it. Not too much. Just a little bit of thyme to kick it up a little bit more flavor. Because thyme doesn't wait for nobody time without time is no good right so 
flavor again. We'll give it some salt, just a tad bit of that, not too much. And then black pepper for sure. And of course, I did go in and add some onion powder to it. And as you can see here, I'm for sure I'm not measuring anything, but just I eyeball everything. Now I did go and use some garlic powder to it as well. And I added two um, tablespoons of unsalted butter. Also, I went in with some fresh garlic to it because garlic makes everything taste better. And I did use some avocado oil to it as well. You can substitute that avocado oil for with any kind of oil that you have in your kitchen. Just grab it and use it. Now, my combo seasoning goes good on veggies. So, to kick it up a higher notch, I added some combo seasoning to it as well. That was it. That's how it look. Put it on my stove top. Let it cook at medium heat for nothing past 10 minutes because these veggies cook up really, really fast. Just like that. 10 minutes on medium heat and it was all done. You see how fast it's, it, it cooks and the cabbage shrinks very fast as you can see how much I cut up and what's there it cooks really really fast but that's all she needed was this cabbage and yeah it was done mm -hmm. done quick 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 thing yummy nice and tender fast easy and simple and it was ready to go she also wanted some plantains as well but not too much so I did fire up some plantain pretty much a big size cook that on medium heat like a lot huh and yes oh my god these was so sweet these plantains are very very sweet I bought these um organic plantain at the farmers market so now everything is all done the veggies are done the rice and peas is done the uh, curry chicken is done and honey let me tell you it was immaculate she was happy everybody that had this 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 meal was happy and i have to share this with you goody that um cornbread that i made uh i got about six orders after i made that it was a showstopper so i I, I tell you guys you have to try that cornbread mix recipe because this right here I made me some mola making that thing you hear me so go ahead and give it a shot it was fast on the table it was easy and it was simple yeah so yeah that's it y'all that was what I made for this event um congratulations to the the high school girl i hope you and your friends really enjoy the recipe and yeah guys give me a thumbs up share with friends and family let them know what's going on over here bring them come and send them come and tell me what you like to have me cooking next in my kitchen and remember as always from my kitchen to your kitchen enjoy